It's day three at the third international conference on dengue and dengue hemorrhagic fever in Bangkok, where I'm joined in conversation with Professor Simon Hay from Oxford University in the UK. Simon, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Simon, your talk was on the global distribution and burden in dengue. Can you talk a bit about that, please? Our history is uh, malaria mapping, and about a year ago we were challenged to come up with a global distribution of dengue. And before that time, it was very poorly known around the world. So we set about um, putting together large amounts of information on the distribution of disease and in various sort of mathematical trickery, um, doing our best job to predict the current distribution of dengue. And then once we'd got that map, one of the things that we, we did with that was to match that up with um, very detailed local studies about the burden of disease and then try and infer those numbers at the global level. So not only have we made the, the first distribution map for dengue for a long, long time, but we've managed to come up with an independent estimate of the, the number of cases globally, which we hope will be useful for various people to try and work out dengue's position, really, among the neglected tropical diseases and kind of how much um, priority international organisations should be um, uh, or, or rather where they tally it in their um, uh, portfolio of diseases that they need to worry about. I think if there's, um, among other things that have emerged during this conference, is that predicting dengue is very unpredictable. I mean, this year does it, it's very difficult to, do, to predict patterns, to predict outbreaks. Why is that? There's a, there's a variety of factors. In the, um, you've got the, the fact that it's a mosquito-borne disease, so the mosquitoes are exquisitely sensitive to climate, so um, you have a seasonal patterns in almost everywhere around the world. Then the, the parasite within the mosquito um, prefers the warmer temperatures, so you've got this kind of almost like a seasonality within the, uh, the mosquito, or development phase there. You've got all the different things that humans do, do to avoid um, getting bitten and to exacerbate particular problems. And then you play that complexity out at the uh, national level and regional levels. And then you'll see that you've got very big differences between different parts of the world. And then you focus in on a country and you'll have very big differences between regions. So spatially, there's lots of variation. And then also through time. So most mosquito-borne diseases, dengue included, are, are difficult to predict like that. And dengue also has this other um, nasty complication of having the four different serotypes. So they, in terms of the disease prevalence in any particular location, it's affected by the, the interplay of those as well. So it's almost like four different diseases circulating at the same time. In terms of prevalence, what are the main regions in the world where we're seeing more dengue at present? Well, Asia is definitely the, the, the epicenter, the um, kind of historical focus where it broke out in the, the, the Philippines back in the 40s. And in Asia, it reached high, is high for endemicity. So you've got this um, coastal circulation of four serotypes. It's pretty much, we believe, it's cosmopolitan throughout the tropics now um, and is a big problem also in the Americas. We also think it's a big problem in Africa, though massively under-recognized as a, a cause of febrile disease there. Um, that, that might be contentious to um, some people around the world, but there's more and more evidence now within Africa of transmission. So we think that there's quite a burden in Africa that's not recognized. But it's true to say that the, you know, the, the heart of the problem, if you like, with, in relation to dengue is in Asia. And it is a disease that, contrary to many others, is expanding. It's getting, um, it's entrenched in its endemicity within its range. Um, and it's definitely a, a more of a cause for concern in urban populations than, than rural ones. So it's, um, it's one that, tends to come up high, very high on the sort of political agenda as well. Africa is a major challenge. What are the other sort of global challenges, if we were to sum up, that we're facing in the ongoing battle, if you like, against dengue? Well, I always like to compare dengue to malaria, which I have the, the most experience in. And, and with malaria, we have a very effective um, intervention, so bed nets, which uh, we can deploy very cheaply in most areas of the world and affect, affect morbidity and mortality. Uh, we also have very effective drugs these days, which are having a, a large impact on that disease. And essentially, if you look around the world, we are having uh, a very um, substantial impact on both decreasing the, the global distribution and the endemicity of malaria 
um, throughout the world. If you take every one of those statements and, and reverse it, it's essentially um, we don't have a good um, control option for dengue. There's no drug that you can take once you get it. There's no prophylaxis to stop you um, getting it. So pretty much on all fronts, we're, um, um, we're stumped in relation to dengue, and it's expanding and it's, it's getting worse. So it's one of those diseases that I really do think we need to start paying a lot more attention to. And um, you will have heard at this conference, there are some things that are um, particularly exciting moving forward, vaccines being one of them, and we're all <laughs> hopeful that that will be part of the solution, but also some of these things like the wall back ears that people are releasing to um, uh, essentially affect the lifespans of the mosquitoes so the disease can't, can't transmit, also very exciting. So lots of things to be done, um, but yeah, a long way to go still. Sure. Simon, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure.